Welcome to St. Thomas the Becket Anglican Church, also known as the English Church. We're located in Hamburg, Germany, and today is Sunday, the 5th of April, 2020, and it's Palm Sunday. And because of the current coronavirus pandemic in our country and in our world, we will not be having services in the church on Sundays until further notice. We hope that the technology with which we are having this service today will be inspirational and that Germany and the rest of the world will recover quickly from this pandemic. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, 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 Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna. So as I said, this is Palm Sunday, and I'm really sorry that I can't give you any palms to take home to remind you of what happened this day in the life of Jesus. But here's an alternative. You know, that day in the life of Jesus, palms were in abundance in that area of the world. And therefore, that's what the people waved in the air with great enthusiasm. But you won't find many palm trees in Hamburg, Germany. So let me suggest that you, you pause this service and go get anything green that may be in your garden or on your kitchen windowsill or just even get a green piece of paper and, and cut out a palm. It doesn't have to be fancy. At the, end, at the end of the service, I'll ask God to bless that greenery and you can put it on your fridge and it will be ah, a symbol to serve as a reminder of the sacredness of this day. And yes, God can bless something even outside of the church. He's that powerful. Imagine, huh? Hey, thanks today to Madeline and Katya for doing two of the readings and to Katya for doing the intercessions. And also to my wife, Penny, for assisting with the reading of the Passion and uh, to Yoten for providing the organ music for today. Today, our gospel is the Passion and the Crucifixion of Jesus. And because the gospel is very long, it pretty much says it all. And so my sermon is going to be fairly short. So let's begin with today's collect. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, in your tender love for the human race, you sent your Son, Jesus, our Savior, to take upon him our nature, and to suffer death upon the cross, giving us the example of, of his great humility. Mercifully grant that we may walk in the way of his suffering and also share in, in his resurrection through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. And everybody said, Amen. So let's listen now as God speaks personally to each of us through the words of Holy Scripture. The first reading is a reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher, that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he wakens, 
wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me. Who will declare me guilty? This is the word of the Lord. The psalm for Palm Sunday is Psalm 31, verses 9 to 16. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I am in trouble. My eye is consumed with sorrow, and also my throat and my belly. For my life is wasted with grief and my years with sighing. My strength fails me because of affliction and my bones are consumed. I have become a reproach to all my enemies and even to my neighbors, a dismay to those of my acquaintance. When they see me in the street, they avoid me. I am forgotten like a dead man, out of mind. I am as useless as a broken pot. For I have heard the whispering of the crowd. Fear is all around. They put their heads together against me. They plot to take my life. But as for me, I have trusted in you, O Lord. I have said, you are my God. My times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. Make your face shine upon your servant and in your loving kindness, save me. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. One of the twelve, who was called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priest and said, What will you give me if I betray Jesus to you? They paid him thirty pieces of silver. And from that moment, he began to look for an opportunity to betray him. On the first day of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus saying, Where do you want us to make the preparations for you to eat the Passover? He said, Go into the city to a certain man and, and say to him, The teacher says, My time is near. I will keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. So the disciples did as Jesus had directed them, and they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, he took his place with the twelve, and while they were eating, he said, Truly, I tell you, one of you will betray me. And they became greatly distressed and began to say to one another, Surely not I, Lord. He answered, The one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. The Son of Man goes as it is written of him, but woe to that one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. Judas, who betrayed him, said, Surely not I, Rabbi. He replied, You have said so. While they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to the disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this, this is my blood of the covenant which is poured out for many 
for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will never again drink of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. When they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, You will all become deserters because of me this night, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the shepherd of the flock will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go ahead of you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Though all become deserters because of you, I will never desert you. Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you, this very night, before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, Even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And so said all the disciples. Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and, and pray. He took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be grieved and agitated. Then he said to them, I, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Just remain here and, and stay awake with me. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me, yet not what I want, but what you want. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping, and he said to Peter, So could you not stay awake with me one hour? Stay awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit is indeed willing, but the flesh is weak. Again he went away for the second time and prayed, My father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. Again he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. So leaving them again, he went away and prayed for the third time, saying the same words. Then he came to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and, and taking your rest? See, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up! Let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. And while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. With him a large crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Arrest him. At once he came up to Jesus and said, Greetings, Rabbi. And kissed him. Jesus said to him, Friend, do what you are here to do. Then they came and laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. Suddenly one of those with Jesus put his hand on his sword, drew it, and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Put your sword back into its place, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think that I cannot appeal to my father, and he will at once send me more than twelve legions of angels? But how then would the scriptures be fulfilled? which say it must happen in this way. At that hour, Jesus said to the crowds, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as if I were a bandit? Day after day, I sat in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me. But all this has taken place so that the scriptures of the prophets may be fulfilled. Then all the disciples deserted him and fled. Those who had arrested Jesus took him to Caiaphas, the high priest, in whose house the scribes and the elders had gathered. But Peter was following him as a distance, as far as the courtyard of the high priest, and going inside. He sat with the guards in order to see how this would end. Now the chief priest and the whole council were looking for false testimony against Jesus so that they might put him to death. 
but they found none, though many false witnesses came forward. At least two came forward and said, This fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and to build it in three days. The high priest stood up and said, Have you no answer? What is it that they testify against you? But Jesus was silent. Then the high priest said to him, I put you under oath before the living God. Tell us if you are the Messiah, the Son of God. Jesus said to him, You have said so. But I tell you, from now on you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, He has blasphemed! Why do we still need witnesses? You have now heard his blasphemy. What is your verdict? They answered, He deserves death. Then they spat in his face and struck him, and some slapped him, saying, Prophesy to us, you Messiah. Who is it that struck you? Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. A servant girl came to him and said, You also were with Jesus the Galilean. But he denied it before all of them, saying, I do not know what you're talking about. When he went out onto the porch, another servant girl saw him, and she said to the bystanders, This man was with Jesus of Nazareth. Again, he denied it with an oath. I do not know the man. After a little while, the bystanders came up and said to Peter, Certainly you are also one of them, for your accent betrays you. Then he began to curse, and he swore an oath. I do not know the man. At that moment, the cock crowed. Then Peter remembered what Jesus had said. Before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. When morning came, all the chief priests and the elders of people conferred together against Jesus in order to bring about his death. They bound him, led him away and handed him over to Pilate, the governor. When Judas, his betrayer, saw that Jesus was condemned, he repented and brought back the thirty pieces of silver to the chief priests and the elders. He said, I have sinned by, by betraying innocent blood. But they said, What is that to us? See to it yourself. Throwing down the pieces of silver in the temple, he departed, and he went out and hanged himself. But the chief priest, taking the pieces of silver, said, It is not lawful to put them into the treasury, since they are our blood money. After conferring together, they used him to buy the potter's field as a place to bury foreigners. For this reason, that field has been called the field of blood to this day. Then was fulfilled what had been spoken through the prophet Jeremiah, and they took the thirty pieces of silver, the price of the one on whom a price had been set, on whom some of the people of Israel had set a price, and they gave them for the potter's field, as the Lord commanded me. Now Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, You say so. But when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he did not answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many accusations they make against you? But he gave no answer, not even to a single charge, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now at the festival, the governor was accustomed to release a prisoner for the crowd, anyone whom they wanted. At that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Jesus Barabbas. So after that, they gathered. Pilate said to them, Whom do you want me to release for you? Jesus Barabbas or Jesus who is called the Messiah? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that they had handed him over. While he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him. 
have nothing to do with that innocent man, for today I have suffered a great deal because of a dream about him. Now the chief priest and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus killed. The governor again said to them, Which of the two do you want me to release for you? And they said, Barabbas! Pilate said to them, Then what should I do with Jesus, who is called the Messiah? All of them said, Let, Let him, him be, be crucified. crucified. Then he asked, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Let, Let him, him be crucified. crucified. So when Pilate saw that he could do nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took some water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. Then the people as a whole answered, His, his blood, blood be on, on us and on, on our children. children. So he released Barabbas to them, and after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters, and they gathered the whole cohort around them. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him, and after twisting some thorns into his crown, they put it on his head. They put a reed in his right hand and knelt before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! They spat on him and took the reed and struck him on the head. After mocking him, they stripped him of the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. As they went out, they came upon a man from Cyrene named Simon. They compelled this man to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of a skull, they offered him wine to drink mixed with gall. But when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And when they had crucified him, they divided his clothes among themselves by casting lots. Then they sat down there and kept watch over him. Over his head they put the charge against him, which read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then two bandits were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, you who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests also, along with the scribes and elders, were mocking him, saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. He is the King of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God deliver him now, if he wants to. For he said, I am God's son. The bandits who were crucified with him also taunted him in the same way. From noon on, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lemma sabachthani. That is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, This, this man, man is, is calling for Elijah. Elijah. At once, one of them ran and got a sponge, filled it with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink. But the others said, Wait, Wait let, let us see, see whether Elijah, Elijah will, will come, come to, to save, save him. him. Then Jesus cried again with a loud voice and breathed his last. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks were split. The tombs also were opened and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. After his resurrection, they came out of the tombs and entered the holy city and appeared to many. Now when the centurion and those with him who were keeping watch over Jesus saw the earthquake quake, and what took place, they were terrified and said, Truly, this man was God's son. Many women were also there, looking on from a distance. They had followed Jesus from Galilee and had provided for him. 
Among those were Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Joseph, and the mothers of the son of Zebedee. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who was also a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be given to him. So Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had honed in the rock. He then rolled a great stone to the door of the tomb and went away. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were there, sitting opposite the tomb. The next day, that is, after the day of preparation, the chief priest and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, Sir, we remember what that imposter said while he was still alive. After three days, I will rise again. Therefore, command the tomb to be made secure until the third day. Otherwise, his disciples may go and steal him away and tell the people he has been raised from the dead. And the last deception would be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, You have a guard of soldiers. Go, make it as secure as you can. So they went with the guard and made the tomb secure by sealing the stone. A friend of mine told me about the trip that he and his wife made to the Holy Land last year. Their tour bus stopped on the top of the Mount of Olives, and next to them was this ancient cemetery, uh, and, and it, it was where the Jews were buried, and, and they were buried there because they were in anticipation uh, that the Messiah would appear on that spot. As soon as they got off the bus, uh, this tour guide told them that it was time for them to, to walk down the road in front of them. And it's a road that has been there for about 3,000 years. And at the bottom of the hill is the Garden of Gethsemane. And the ancestors of the olive trees next to the road overheard Judas betray Jesus. Straight ahead was Mount Zion, with the ancient walls of the city of Jerusalem. Well, my friends were about to walk down that same road that Jesus took when he entered the city on Palm Sunday. As my friends got off the bus, there were the merchants <laughs> ready to sell them a ride down the hill on the donkey for about 200 euros. Borrow your donkey here! Only 200 euros! We take Visa, MasterCard. Why so much? Hey, location, location, location! The Mount of Olives is the most famous place on earth to borrow, <laughs> borrow a donkey. Some other people on the bus did rent donkeys, uh, but my friend said that it was hilarious. Uh, but they passed on that donkey rental business. <laughs> and that day when Jesus was there, he borrowed a donkey. Many people lined the road. It was Passover. Everyone, everyone waited to see him. He is the, he is the rightful ruler of God's people, not Caesar. He comes to redeem the people from, from the oppression of the empire. But he comes on a borrowed donkey. Now, what, what kind of a king is this? But there's more. Jesus was born in a, in a borrowed place and laid in a borrowed manger. He traveled. He had no place of, of his own to spend the night. He ate his final meal in a, in a borrowed room. He was crucified on a, on a borrowed cross, wearing a borrowed crown of sharp thorns. And when he died... Somebody placed his body in a borrowed tomb, and his enemies tried to forget him. In 1962, Nikita Khrushchev sent up Sputnik into the heavens. A short time later, he sent up Russian astronauts. A Russian astronaut came back to Earth and, and, and pompously said, How? We didn't see any battalions of angels up in the sky! Well, if you're as old as me, you may remember Khrushchev's mocking in the newspaper. He said, he said, where were God's battalions? 
the Russian ruler laughed, and he sneered, No angels with our astronauts. Time passed, and Khrushchev died to face his final judgment. Others try to erase his name from the pages of history, Jesus' name. They, they proclaim, this is it. There is nothing else. And how many college students face the so-called great intellectuals, Shaw, Camus, Sartre, Huxley, Voltaire, Mencken, who, who try to, to lead every college student to the enlightened conclusion that there is no God, that Jesus was not real, that his life, his death, and his resurrection were, were not real. All kings die, all chancellors die, all presidents die, all dictators die, all prime ministers die. Few of them are remembered, except maybe fleetingly in the, in the pages of, of history books. But one king has and will continue to live for the rest of time. His name and his spirit are even more alive today than they were 2,000 years ago. Billions, billions have known him intimately and believed in him. And countless pages have been written about him. Countless miracles have been done by him. Countless lives have been changed by him. So Jesus is executed in, in every generation, yes. But no one has been able to kill him or forget him. Keep that in mind. His name and his kingdom live on forever. And God keeps doing his saving work and keeps asking us to free ourselves of of all selfishness, too much attachment to the things of this world, and to do it all in the name of Jesus, who just wishes to possess our hearts. Jesus Christ is King. Crown him with many crowns. Amen. And now let's, uh, let's have the intercessions, which will be prayed by Katya this morning. Prayers of Intercession for Palm Sunday, 2020. As we are getting closer to the darkest hours of your son's way into sacrifice, we pray to you, merciful Father, for your guidance through the darkness threatening the world right now. Like your son, we trust in you, your never-ending love and support, and your promise of a new covenant for a future of brightness, love, and peace. Dear Father, please guide our church, our community, the whole world through this time of challenge. Help us to become stronger in our faith and spirituality and in practicing your son's lectures of humility and compassion. We pray for our bishops, archdeacons, and priests the Chaplaincy Council, and all who contribute to the congregation's welfare in every way they can. And we thank you for the technical means to do so. We pray for Her Majesty the Queen and the leaders of all nations. Help them to stay calm, listen to the right voices, and speak and act well considered to seek the best course of action and interaction for the safety and well-being of all their peoples and neighbors. Father, we ask you to ease the pain of the sick and their relatives and friends, often separated from each other due to the quarantine rules. Comfort those suffering from the disease, those who lost loved ones and the medical personnel will have to face the horrors of solitary, sad, and desperate patients, often unto death, every day. Give strength and determination to everyone working in health care and production and distribution of supplies for everyone. 
we especially cry out to you to make unmindfully people aware of their egoism by stockpiling, leaving nothing to buy for many others at all. Lord, we pray for everyone whose existence is unstable and endangered due to the shutdown, for fair solutions to stabilize the situation and the chance for a successful restart once it is possible. Please take care of our public transport workers, police and security officers, firefighters, ambulances, reservists and active military staff who also work for the people around the clock. Also, we ask you to look after the artists who bring so much light and enjoyment to our world and try their best to still entertain us from home while studios and stages are closed as well. Last but not least, we also put the welfare of animals dependent on owners or caretakers in your gentle hands. Dearest Father, we thank you for the light you've already shown us through kindness and helpfulness, through love and understanding among people all over the world. Please help those still wandering in the dark and cold to see the true light. Give us strength and faith to overcome all obstacles and follow your Son, our Lord, as we recognize this testing time as part of the prophecies in the book of Revelation and look forward to his second coming in hope and faith. Merciful Father, please accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Before Jotun plays our final hymn, please hold whatever you're using in place of a palm frond and let's ask God to bless it. And after he blesses it, put it somewhere where you can see it and let it remind you of that final long journey Jesus took for you and me. Let us pray. God our Savior, whose Son Jesus Christ entered Jerusalem as Messiah to suffer and to die, let these pretend palms be for us a sign of his victory. And grant that we who bear them in his name may ever hail him as our king and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life. Bless these objects and bless us, bless us all in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And they all said, Amen. <laughs> And now, Jotun will conclude our service with a song in Latin. Translated, it means, By your cross and passion, free us, Lord. By your holy resurrection, free us, Lord. Have a blessed day. And please join us on Maundy Thursday, Good Friday, and Easter Sunday. Stormy, they leave it on,
Domine, libera nos, Domine, libera nos, Domine.